This is a podcast from the Environmental Change and Security Program at the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars. A new book entitled Too Poor for Peace, published by the Brookings Institution, surveys the myriad connections between poverty and insecurity. As a contributing author to the book, Colin Call wrote a chapter entitled Demography, Environment, and Civil Strife. Um, my name is Colin Call. I'm an assistant professor in the Security Studies program at Georgetown University. And I'm also a fellow at the Center for a New American Security, which is a, a new think tank here in Washington, D.C. The chapter explores the relationship between natural resources, demography, poverty, and violence. Call is a leading voice on the interconnectedness of these different pressures. And in March 2006, he published a book called States, Scarcity, and Civil Strife in the Developing World. For Call, the evolving concept of security is important to uncovering the state of our knowledge on these issues and their connections. I mean, I think people have been concerned for a long time about the possibility that uh, population growth and environmental degradation and resource scarcity could contribute to violence. Um, but it really became uh, in, in vogue, uh, came back in vogue uh, after the end of the Cold War, when people were kind of asking, what, what is the security environment going to look after the collapse of the bipolar competition between the United States and the Soviet Union? And people started to focus on a whole range of new security matters, in fact, opening up the concept of security itself to include all sorts of threats to human well-being, including poverty, food insecurity, uh, and environmental uh, degradation and resource scarcity. So. That's really where I enter the debate, is the debate during the, in the 1990s. And there, the debate was kind of, um, at first, dominated by what I call neo-Malthusians, uh, individuals who argued that, um, you know, rapid population growth combined with environmental degradation and scarcity can contribute to uh, rebellion and insurgency and terrorism and other forms of civil and ethnic strife, uh, principally in developing countries. Um, but more recently, there's been a literature and a critique of the Neo-Malthusian school by uh, neoclassical economics, uh, which argues on the one hand that um, societies are a lot better able to adapt to resource scarcities than Neo-Malthusians think, and on the other hand that it may, not be it may not be scarcity of resources that contributes to violence in some countries, but actually an abundance of resources. And so really the, the chapter that I wrote tries to take stock of that debate. After September 11th, the discourse on security was instantly altered, but Call argues that the shift allowed a closer look at the underlying causes of state failure, which includes environment and poverty. 9-11 had two effects. It had a short-term effect and a medium-term effect. The short-term effect was to, was to push everything else off the security agenda. That is, everything became, became um, you know, centered around the threat of terrorism, and then that was expanded by the administration uh, to be kind of the intersection of terrorist tyrants and technology. So state sponsors of terrorism, weapons of mass destruction, uh, and terrorist organizations that were kind of wrapped up and called the war on terrorism. Right. Um, so what that did was it kind of pushed away um, kind of a broader understanding of security. That was the short-term effect, and kind of that marginalized uh, the discourse about environmental security. But actually, uh, as, as people have, have thought more about the sources of 9-11, um, including uh, those within the administration, those within the U.S. military, they've identified the fundamental source of 9-11 as very much about problems of governance, uh, weak, failing, and failed states. Um, Afghanistan uh, on September 10th, 2001, was you know among the the the, uh, the weakest and 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 most failed state uh, that that we can think of around the around the globe. And 9-11 and was very much an externality of that of that state failure. So. Um, because of that, the U.S. military and, and even this administration has become increasingly interested in what are the causes of failed states, what are the causes of civil strife, which can produce these externalities like, like terrorism and other forms of international instability. So um, that's brought the environment back in. Uh, and when then you had a couple of events to include uh, the Southeast Asian tsunami, uh, uh, Hurricane Katrina in this country, the Pakistan earthquake, a number of kind of natural disasters right. that had pretty profound effects on the security of the United States or were viewed that way. And so it was kind of a confluence of all these things that has now kind of brought the environment uh, security connection back into, uh, back into the, the mindset of the security establishment in Washington. Critiquing the different pathways to violence, Call recommends economic diversification to reduce the dependence and vulnerability to shocks as well as direct assistance to build the capacity of governments to monitor and manage vital resources. Well, if, if we recognize that there are kind of different types of 
pathologies uh, and pathways to violence, uh, some that relate to resource scarcity, especially scarcity of so-called renewable resources, so uh, fresh water, um, arable land, fisheries, forests, um, that scarcities of those resources can have kind of diffuse destabilizing effects on societies that make them uh, prone to violence. On the other hand, concentrations of so-called non-renewable mineral resources, so you can think in terms of diamonds, uh, gold, copper, um, or oil, um, that actually abundant local supplies of these, of these resources, I mean, they're globally scarce, scarce, but they are locally abundant and incredibly valuable, which means they can be, uh, be things that are easily fought over by rebel groups, can be seized by violent organizations to fund uh, armed conflict, those types of things. There's also a lot of literature that suggests that countries that are very dependent on mineral re resources, in particular oil, tend to have certain developmental and political um, pathologies that contribute to kind of corruption, authoritarian states that are, that are prone to sparking rebellions, those types of things. So you've got these twin menaces, the scarcity of renewable resources on the one hand and the abundance of mineral resources on the other, and my recommendations kind of focused on, on those. So uh, on the one hand, I think it's important that developing countries continue to diversify their economies so that um, they're, they're not as dependent on natural resources for income and there's more societal resilience in the face of shocks. Um, it's really important uh, that the United States government uh, contribute to building governance capacity around the globe because the ability of societies and states to uh, kind of um, roll with the punches uh, that environmental shocks uh, can generate or demographic shocks can generate is very much a function of governance capacity. Um, and I also think that it's important for uh, the United States to improve its capacity uh, to intervene uh, in countries that are experiencing instability, either to promote development, uh, to promote um, sustainable democracy, uh, or uh, if need be, to uh, keep the peace or enforce the peace. For more information on the intersection of population, environment, and conflict, please visit our website at www.wilsoncenter.org slash ECSP.